a V8 in a Bronco? Say it ain't so. Well, I think we're all pretty excited about this and I'm quite certain it's gonna be happening. So today, I'm gonna give you a little inside peek at what the Bronco might be getting We'll discuss which V8. I'd love to hear about it in the comments at the end of the video. After you watch the whole video, let me know in the comments which V8 you think we're gonna be getting in the Bronco. I'm gonna be telling you exactly why we're getting a Bronco in the V8. Not this year, but for next year, part of those uh, special editions that Ford announced. So Ford is definitely trying to uh, take a little bit of heat off of some of the bad news, and they're bringing us a whole lot of almost con completely confirmed good news. So let's get right to it. Let's put the pedal to the metal and let's look into this whole V8 question in a Bronco. So welcome to the channel. If you're new to the, ch to the channel, I'm Johnny and I'm your host. Uh, this is Johnny's Car Care and Reviews where I give you a little bit of insider information on what's going on at Ford. Uh, I try to break the news before anyone else uh, because I do have a little a little spot and a little sneak peek into what's going on at Ford and I try to stay on top of the news to bring you the latest and greatest news. Now you're going to want to watch this video because this is some really exciting news. We're getting a V8 in the Bronco. I'm sure of it and I'm going to tell you exactly why. So let's put the pedal to the metal and jump right in. Okay, so a V8 in the Bronco. Why do I believe this? Well, Bronco Nation has actually done a collaborative effort with Shelby, uh, the granddaughter, and uh, she's driving around and racing around in a Bronco, as you'll see in the video throughout this video. I'll be showing you a bit of that. And it's pretty obvious that Bronco Nation is uh, a marketing hand of Ford, uh, not not completely owned by Ford, but it's pretty cool, pretty clear uh, last summer when they had announced that they would be part of their marketing team, that they're hiring them on to, you know, bring us info really to market the Bronco. So what's gone down since then? Well, after they had released that news, they never really talked about it again. And Bronco Nation has brought us some good news. And at times they're also the ones bringing us a little bit of bad news. Um, so they kind of make and break all the news and you know they're being paid by Ford so when they bring something out it's not because they're you know completely speculative and you know when they make a video uh, like they did with um, with Shelby Shelby Hall uh, they're, they're making this video because it's it's confirmed and it's allowed by Ford it's just not out of the blue that they call up you know someone over at Shelby and say hey let's do a video that really makes it look like there's definitely gonna be a V8 in the Bronco. Now, in the video, do they confirm that it's gonna be a V8? No, but I'd say it's about 95% certain that it will be a V8, and here's why. At the beginning of the video, they do a bit of a drag race on part of the, the racetrack that has a straightaway. So they start on a straightaway, and going into that first corner, the Bronco is just barely behind the Shelby GT500. Now, that's the Predator engine, meaning it's a 5.2 liter Voodoo engine, However, it has a supercharger making it the Predator. So yes, the Bronco has four x four and it certainly does help with, you know, keeping up. But the only other real non V8 option that it could be is a 3.5 liter EcoBoost, which would disappoint, uh, I think, a lot of people. And I think people will, will have found that, you know, releasing a video with Shelby, even if it's gonna be Shelby, making that special edition Bronco, I think a lot of people would find this to be, you know, a bad tease because, you know, the clear path, the clear assumption is that it's going to be a V8. The question is just which one. Now, we have seen in the past that there almost certainly is a 3.5 liter being tested in a Bronco. And I'd say that's going to go towards the Warthog or Raptor. Now it's starting to look like they're probably going to call it the Raptor, uh, and that 3.5 liter EcoBoost, uh, we've also seen spy photos of, you know, orange red cabling underneath the vehicle. Sorry, I'm a little colorblind, so I think it's orange, but anyways, so the orange cabling to show that it's a hybrid. Now, which hybrid option does Ford offer? Well, we have the 3.5 liter EcoBoost or Power Boost from the F-150. So likely the Warthog or Rangers getting that as an extremely beefy motor. And it is extremely beefy in the F-150. It makes 570 pound-feet of torque. Uh, 
And it makes all that power at extremely low end. Now, I'm not gonna get into a whole torque and horsepower discussion thoroughly in this video, but torque is really what's gonna be important for making you feel the power. It's what kicks you into the back of your seat. Uh, it's what really jolts the Ford vehicle forward or jerks the vehicle forward. Now, horsepower is more all about top speed. Uh, you know, just to give you an example, Farm tractors have an incredible amount of torque and that's why they can take off. That's why they can, you know, take off even when they're pulling 30,000 pounds uh, or more. Uh, but they don't, you know, we're all stuck behind them on the roads. If you're in a city, you don't know what that feels like. But, you know, out here in the country, we don't have traffic. We have getting stuck behind a tractor. It's not the funnest thing. And, uh, well, that's because they have low horsepower. They usually have around 200 horsepower for all that weight. So they do not have a very good top speed. Now, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine, it would be incredible. Just not in a Shelby. So this is all part of the package that Ford did mention when they broke a bit of bad news, um, well, over the last few weeks at times, last few months, they have brought us a little bit of disappointing news in regards to delays. I think a lot of it is understandable with everything that's going on, but it's got a lot of people worked up. It's got a lot of people frustrated. So. What are they doing? Well, I announced it last week uh, in the middle of the week that I thought they'd be bringing us really good news and they did on Thursday. Uh, a whole lot of people got dates, myself included, but I'll leave all that information for another video uh, and what it really means. So, you know, if you want to if you want to stay tuned, like and subscribe because by liking and subscribing and if you especially hit the bell notification, uh, you're going to be getting my upcoming videos and I'm definitely going to be covering what my Bronco build means in regards to when you will get your Bronco build. So it'll really help you understand everything that's going on. And really, that's the whole point of this channel. I want to be as helpful as possible. So sometimes I'm doing a little car care where, you know, I'm waxing and showing different types of waxes and which meth best used methods for waxing. Other times I'm reviewing vehicles because I feel that, you know, it's just a vehicle that needs to be reviewed if it hasn't already been, you know, completely overkilled on the internet. And at other times, of course, uh, I'm getting you the best information possible to help you out with, you know, whether it's a purchase or not purchasing, I'm here to help. So back to the topic at hand, the five liter V8. Is that gonna be what's gonna be in a Shelby? I highly doubt it. Already as it is the Ford Ranger platform uh, which is the one being used in the Bronco. Uh, the Ford Ranger platform is at 77.8 inches in width, excluding those mirrors. Now, of course, the Bronco, they don't want to tell us how wide it is excluding those mirrors, but they do say with the mirrors folded, the Badlands comes in at 76.3 inches and the Wild Track comes in at 79.3 inches with the mirrors folded. So, Essentially, we've got a vehicle that's the same width as the Ranger and to cram just a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine into the Ranger. Well, they have. They have for uh, the race ver version for the th uh, for the thousand uh, ba Baja races or Baja pro more properly pronounced. Um, they've got to widen that that frame, the whole the whole track. So. What's gonna be going down? Well, it would be evident to think it's a whole lot easier to fit a V8 five liter into a Bronco, and that's what Shelby will offer us because, well, it's easier. Uh, but, you know, sometimes Ford doesn't go with the easiest route. They often go with the crowd pleaser as they're doing with this one. So what I think the Shelby is really gonna be, the Shelby Bronco, who knows what name they're gonna give it. I'm hoping they give it a name with some numbers uh, as Shelby always has, you know, with 350s, 500s. So I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section, what name uh, they might use. Do you think maybe Ford is going to go down the road of calling their Bron their special edition Bronco a Raptor, whereas Shelby is going to get to use the Warthog name and maybe throw some letters at the end of it the way they do for uh, the, the bomber jets? Let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear your opinion. And I think, you know, it'd be nice to have a little discussion going in on this. So is it going to be a five liter? Well, I highly doubt it for one really great reason. Uh, in the takeoff video, when they're taking off on a racetrack down, it's straight. They get to that first corner and well, you know what? The, the, the Predator Shelby GT500 is only 
slightly ahead. Now, of course, the Bronco does have the advantage of having four by four on takeoff. And really, what speed are they, are they going once they get into that front corner? Well, maybe someone who's actually raced on this racetrack can let us know, you know, what corner one, what speed should you be going in a GT500 would help us figure out what's the likelihood of uh, getting that exact same engine. Uh, because it could be the 5.2 liter Predator engine we're going to going to get but I also kind of doubt that because a 5.2 liter Predator has a supercharger and you know at that point we're really starting to get uh, to playing around in the space the space in that engine bay because a 2.7 liter uh, fits pretty snug into the Bronco engine bay so is it a 5.2 liter supercharge I'm thinking it's less likely and is it a 5.2 liter without the supercharged, so is it the Voodoo engine? I'd say that's probably our likeliest bet. I, I, I'd put my money, I'd put you know my $5, uh, my $5 bet you could say on that. I think it's gonna be a 5.2 liter with no supercharger. Heck, you, you don't, what are you gonna do with 776 horsepower uh, in, in a Bronco. Now the 5.2 liter is definitely an amazing engine, uh, whether it has a supercharger or not, I'd love to hear. Let me know in the comments section. Let's let's get a discussion going on with which V8 engine you think it's going to be. And if you think I'm completely wrong and you think, you know, Shelby's going to be doing a 3.5 liter EcoBoost, let us know. That EcoBoost engine, you know, to keep in mind in an F-150 without uh, the electric engine. Uh, so as a power boost, that's a 3.5 liter EcoBoost with electric engine. It's making 570 pound feet of torque and 430 horsepower. Now the 3.5 liter EcoBoost is making 400 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque. So in no way is this a bad engine. And keep in mind, this is the engine used in the Ford GT. You know, that's the, the Ferrari competitor and uh, at times the Ferrari beater. So that it, the 3.5 liter is an incredible engine. If we get it, uh, I'm not going to be swearing off Ford and say, Ford, never again. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out, no, I'm not gonna be out on Ford. I think the 3.5 liter is a great engine, but what I want is sound. Um, you know, the, the power boost or the eco boost engines are incredible in regards to their low end torque. They're actually pretty unbeatable. Uh, it's pretty hard to find a V8 and you just don't find a V8 with more low end torque. You know, they're making 100% of the torque at 3000 RPM. That's incredible, but I'd love a V8 with a supercharger. How, how could they ever fit a supercharger in that engine bay? Well, though, I think the possible solution would be to go with a five liter, but to supercharge that five liter. So really our four V8 options are gonna be either a straight five liter, I doubt that. A 5.2 liter, I think that's very likely. A 5.2 liter with supercharger, I'm starting to think that there's a whole lot of issues in regards to space in that engine bay, so I'd say that's pretty unlikely in my opinion. Or a five liter with supercharger, and I'd say the 5.2 liter, no supercharger is more likely, but boy would I ever love to see a five liter with a supercharger. Now the video didn't help us out uh, because when the Bronco does go down that hill, uh, they deliberately muted the sound of the Bronco. Now of course, in filming, you know, they have the excuse of, well, the Bronco was being shot from further away. And it actually, the Bronco cuts cuts the corner and is cutting quite a, quite a ways away from the camera. Then, of course, right after, we hear the incredible sound of the 5.2 liter Predator engine of the GT500. And the sound is amazing. But what I'm finding is that the cutaway sound of the Bronco, before they allow the Shelby sound to come into the video, the cutaway sound of that Bronco, in my opinion, you can tell, I, I think that's the sound of a 5.2 liter. Um, and of course, because it was too far away to hear anything other than a, a little bit of engine noise. So I couldn't hear if that had a supercharger on it. I'm going to continue listening to that video and uh, I'm going to put on my earphones to really, you know, really try to figure out more. That'll be coming up in future videos and hey, maybe by then Ford will be telling us what engine we're going to be getting. I kind of doubt it. Uh, I think it's going to be a while before we find out the engine because I think this is going to be something that's going to arrive in late spring, 
early summer. Ford seems to give us really amazing news in July and uh, hopefully we don't get any bad news in December saying it's delayed, but I think probably in around October, November, we're gonna find out when exactly we're gonna be getting this. I'm, I'd put my money on mid-spring the earliest. I think it's gonna be a mid-spring to late spring arrival for something that we can definitely get into the dealerships and our hands on come summer. However, of course, what we've seen with the Bronco is things seem to sell out fast. So, you know, I'm going to keep you informed so that you can put a deposit on this as soon as you can put a deposit on it. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please, if it has been helpful, like and subscri subscribe. It helps to feed a poodle uh, and it keeps this so channel. Thank going. you for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. And for all the subscribers out there that got me to a thousand uh, subscribes, I want to put a little video together to say thank you. But in the meantime, I'll give you a quick one. Thank you very much. So stay tuned for more Ford, more Bronco, and really just more helpful automobile information. Have a great week. I wish you all more cars and more power and I really do hope that you get to put the pedal to the metal. <laughs>